Welcome to Dip Your Toes Into Carmel, the podcast of the semi-province of St. Therese. Walk with us today as we reflect on St. Simon's Stock and the Brown Scapular by Father Sam Anthony Morello, OCD, and Father Patrick McMahon, OCARM, originally published as part of their Catechesis on the Brown Scapular. Did our Blessed Lady appear to St. Simon Stock and give him the brown scapular? The long-standing tradition of the Church has approved this vision as an acceptable cult, but that doesn't authenticate it as a historical experience. In fact, one must be careful to speak of any vision as a historical experience. Supernatural phenomena are a sort of intersection between time and eternity, and as such, have a unique relationship to history, which is always strictly limited to events that happen in time. The most one can say historically, for example, is that at such and such an hour, on such and such a day, This visionary had an experience of seeing this particular phenomenon. For example, one can say that on February 11, 1858, Bernadette Subiru had an experience in which she perceived the Blessed Virgin standing in a grotto at Lourdes. One can speak historically of the living visionary Bernadette and what Bernadette experienced on that given day. It is more difficult to speak historically of the Blessed Virgin appearing because the Blessed Virgin no longer lives in a historical state, but lives in eternity. Since her dormition, Mary is beyond the realm of history. It is therefore not possible to speak historically of her apparitions. However, one can speak of her apparitions when one speaks in the realm of faith or mystical experience. This is an important distinction because we do not want to reduce our religious experience to the realm of the historically verifiable. Religious experience brings us to those places where we can glimpse beyond the finite something. Religious experience puts us in what years ago one professor of mine called a time that is no time and a place that is no place. When we try to reduce our faith to the historical and verifiable, we rob it of the eternal and transcendent. The question then, from a historical perspective, is not whether Mary appeared to Simon Stock and gave him the scapular, but rather Did Simon Stock perceive the Mother of God bestowing this sign of her protection on him and his brothers in Carmel? Well, after that long and metaphysical discourse, the answer is still seemingly not. There are huge problems with the story of Simon Stock and the scapular. Father Richard Copsey O'Carm wrote an outstanding article for the Journal of Ecclesiastical History on this question. There are several problems. The first is the historicity of Simon himself. The second is the account of the vision. 
There are few surviving documents from the 13th century that record the history of the Carmelite order. There is an ancient tradition, a 14th century necrology, that seems to depend on an older but now vanished text that there was a 13th century prior general named Simon. This is borne out by other 14th century references. There is also a story preserved in Dominican sources of a prior on Mount Carmel by the name of Simon who met Jordan of Saxony during his ill-fated voyage to the Holy Land. And there is a tomb of one Carmelite named Simon in the Cathedral of Bordeaux, a tomb that once stood in the Carmelite church of that city, which in the Middle Ages drew many pilgrims. It is to this last that the stories of the vision seem to be originally attached. This Simon, incidentally, would have been English and not French, as Bordeaux was, for most of the 13th and 14th centuries, in the possession of the kings of England and its religious houses populated by English religious. Simon, the prior of Mount Carmel, Simon, the 13th century general of the order, and Simon, buried at Bordeaux, may have all been one and the same person. But then again, they may have been three individuals, or two of the three could have been the same person. We simply don't know enough about any one of the three Simons to make a judgment. Nor is there any reason to connect Simon from Mount Carmel or even Simon, the prior general, with the scapular vision. A late 14th century tradition makes some link between Simon buried in Bordeaux with the vision, but this first connection with the tradition of the scapular vision, a century and a half after the purported event, is a long time for a tradition to be continuous without written documentation to support it. This brings us to the second problem, the account of the vision. No one seems to know about the vision until the very end of the 14th century, almost a century and a half after it supposedly happened. This is extremely problematic in establishing historical accuracy. Some argue that perhaps the stories were passed down verbally and only come to be written at the close of the 14th century. But there are people who should have known about them, if they were historical, that have no knowledge of the vision at all. The most prominent of these is a Carmelite friar named John Hornby. At a debate at the University of Cambridge in 1375, Hornby attacked the Dominican John Stokes precisely over the claims the Dominicans made for having received their habit from the Blessed Virgin Mary. According to Hornby, the Carmelites, ardent supporters of Mary's Immaculate Conception, were far more worthy of Mary's attention than the Dominicans. The Dominicans followed the thought of St. Thomas Aquinas, who denied the Immaculate Conception. Hornby says that if the Dominicans had received their habit from the Blessed Virgin, they show her little gratitude. They are, he insists, her greatest enemies because of their denial of her Immaculate Conception. Hornby testified in his debate with Stokes to a Dominican custom of having a picture or statue of the Blessed Virgin bestowing the Dominican scapular on the friar's preacher in each of their houses. He never mentions any such custom concerning the Carmelite scapular vision. 
In fact, there are no known pictures of Mary bestowing the scapular on Carmelites from this period or earlier. Moreover, Hornby seems totally ignorant of any legends concerning his fellow Englishman, Simon Stock, having received the scapular from the Blessed Virgin in the previous century. This, despite the fact that he was a member of the same province of the order as Simon Stock, and that he was at Cambridge, less than a hundred miles from Aylesford, the alleged site of the vision. Hornby is not the only one who is unfamiliar with the vision. The two 14th century sources we have for a 13th century general named Simon, the Necrology of the Carmelites of Florence, compiled by Giovanni Bartoli, circa 1374, and the Catalogue of Priors General of the Order, compiled by John Grossi, Prior General of the Avignon Obedience, circa 1390. Mention a prior general named Simon, but give no mention of the scapular or a vision of the Blessed Virgin. All in all, it is not possible to say that the stories of Simon Stock receiving the scapular from the Blessed Virgin Mary are any older than the end of the 14th century, a century and a half after the vision supposedly took place. This presents significant problems to the historian for the claims that a 13th century Carmelite claimed to have seen the Virgin Mary and received the scapular from her. The story of the vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary to Pope John XXII at Avignon, conferring the Sabatine privilege of her promise to deliver from purgatory on the Saturday following death, the souls of any who died in the scapular, has been shown by scholars to be based on an inauthentic papal bull forged in Sicily in the first half of the 15th century. Thus, the Sabatine vision and privilege, too, are without any historical foundation. Moreover, in 1603, a book containing the privileges of the Carmelite order, including the Sabatine privilege, was condemned by the Portuguese Inquisition. Six years later, all books mentioning the Sabatine privilege were put on the Index of Forbidden Books in Portugal. An appeal to Rome ended when the Roman authorities supported the Inquisition's ban. The Carmelites were forbidden to preach the Sabatine privilege, a prohibition they did not always honor. Although the faithful were to be allowed to believe, with certain conditions, that the Blessed Virgin, by her continuous intercession, merciful prayers, merits, and special protection, will assist the souls of deceased brothers and members of the confraternity of the scapular, especially on Saturday, the day which the Church dedicates to the Blessed Virgin. These visions, then, cannot be seen as historical events. That does not mean that they are without meaning. The belief in the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary over the Order of Carmel and its members is, and has always been, strong from the first days of the Order. The scapular serves as a visible reminder of that protection, despite its probable commonplace origins. Well, what about the various statements of the popes over the centuries about the scapular? Don't they prove the historicity of the vision? Frankly, no. Over the years, many popes have encouraged the wearing of the brown scapular. Some, such as Gregory the Thirteenth, Clement the Seventh, Pope Saint Pius the Fifth, Pope Saint Pius the Tenth, and Pope Saint John Paul the Second, have repeated the stories and legends concerning Saint Simon Stock or the Sabatine privilege. No one has ever claimed that these statements enjoy the privilege of infallibility. 
they do not meet the criterion which the First Vatican Council set down for papal statements to be infallible. The statements should be considered doctrinally sound, but that doesn't mean that they are historically accurate. Papal infallibility pertains to faith, doctrine, and morals. It does not extend to history or to the sciences. No Catholic would dispute that the scapular disposes its wearers to grace, including, hopefully, the grace of final perseverance. But we cannot say that Our Lady made any promises to St. Simon Stock or to Pope John XXII regarding this sacramental. For further reflections on the spirituality of Carmel, visit our website at carmelitefriarsocd.org. Thank you for listening to Dip Your Toes into Carmel. Be sure to follow our socials to find out about other opportunities to grow your faith. Links to the full article can be found in our show notes. Until next time.